Amy. And this is a podcast where we talk about music. Today's album is The Party by Andy Schaff. So Andy Schaff is from Saskatchewan, Canada, so that's nice. The Party is his third album, and I think his probably his most well-known album, and it was released in 2016, um, and we both really enjoy it. So let's get into it. Okay, so right right from the beginning, I guess, like, what do you, what do you really like about it, or what kind of... Th- as a whole, what stands whole. out to you? I think the thing that got me the most excited about this album, like when it came out, was the fact that it all was taking place at this one party. Hmm. And I mean, you kind of don't know that at first, I guess, necessarily, but like the idea of all of these different scenes are taking place in this one space. And a- Andy Schaff is so good at telling stories. Like mm-hmm. before this album came out, I knew his other album, uh, Bearer of Bad News, mm-hmm. and I had seen him play live once. and. and like, obviously, if anyone knows Andy Schaff, you probably know the song Wendell Walker, which is the saddest tale ever told. Um, so so to have this kind of album from that good of a storyteller, mm. I think was, like, the, the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if I really noticed the party, it's like, premise. I, I didn't know that that was... I guess the, yeah, the, the sort of lyrical connections, I didn't really... Notice that first, I think, because I, I heard them more as, like, the hits first. So what stood out to you at first? stood out to me really was, like, I think just the instrumentation he uses. Like, I really like his clarinet, like, instrumental parts. And that's what I noticed from his other album, too. Uh, the Bear of Bad News, too, is, like... The orchestration. The orchestration, yeah, yeah like, the piano and, and stuff. So that's what really stood out to me first and made me really love clarinet, I think. <laughs> Uh, but then kind of listening to it as a whole and, and realizing the sort of uh, narrative connections was really interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like it's an album that kind of does it all. And like Andy himself does it all, like he plays mm. and records and writes all the parts. Um, and the album itself is like, has the concept album kind of thing going for it. Mm-hmm. It has the the lyrical connections and all of this. And then it also has the you know, broad instrumentation and it has like really well performed parts and like cool harmony and like all, it has everything. So it opens with the big hit from the album. The Magician. The Magician. Yeah. With a, a pretty, a pretty big introduction. Yeah. I found it like very cinematic the mm-hmm. way it opens. It like fades in. What stood out to you about this song and how it kind of opens up the album? Yeah. Well, this was actually the first song I heard I think by Andy Schaff in general. Wow. Yeah. I really like the... Yeah, I think the intro is a big thing. Um, of the sort of... I think it's kind of like a quiet piano chord. Kind of just repeating. And then with the like explosive like clarinet and string part. The really mm-hmm. cinematic. Like, really like that. That really tied me in. And the, the do-do-do-do-do. Like, that, it's just so catchy. I also really like just the, the timbre and like the tone. Mm. Like... The album overall has this kind of, like, esoteric tone. Like, it's not quite major keys, and it's not quite Mm. just sounding happy. But it's not sad. Yeah. It's kind of, like... The is very like that. Yeah. Like, I think it's in Lydian or something like that. So it's, like, major, but not quite major. Mm. Like, something's a little off and unresolved. Yeah. But it's not, like, a minor key. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the big thing that really sticks out to me about the album, too, as a whole, is all of the... Me, like introductions all the instrumental introductions and even in the middle of songs there's lots of little just instrumental parts but the the introductions i find um really sets the tone for the whole song before the narrative is even introduced mm-hmm. um kind of like the magician where like yeah it's not not totally happy major but not totally like yeah sad. it's kind of like a weird in between and that like the lyrics reflect that too right yeah and when we talked about this the other day we were talking about how the party in itself is that big mixed bag of like it's mm. a party so you're like quote unquote happy but you're like but also drinking yeah you're so drinking and you're like everyone's very happy. insecure yeah and there's a lot of like kind of drama happening and mm-hmm Especially where stuff. it's the the lyrics are from like an inner perspective too, right? I feel like the the inner sort of narrative is very like a a party drinking narrative of like insecurity and like you get lost in your own head. Yeah, you feel almost alone, surrounded by people, like that yeah. classic anxious insecurity. Yeah, 
And I feel like that comes through in a lot of the songs. Like, a big one for that is Early to the Party. Yeah. Because um, from the title, you're like, oh, being early to a party, that kind of sucks. Yeah, and the, you initially get this sort of awkward feeling mm. of, what is it, something with the host still, like, setting up and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, you like, go, go outside for a smoke because you're just uncomfortable and don't know what to do. Exactly, yeah. Just captures captures that really well. And, you, yeah, I find even though all the songs are kind of this inner... Um, experience of like a party it's like you do get really specific characters like he really does create specific characters where Mm -hmm. like you could it's almost fun to like try to map out which song you think which character is but like you can kind of like tell or like tell if a certain song isn't that character like you know so should we do a quick like conspiracy theory of the lyrical connections yes The only two character names we get yeah. are Jeremy and Sherry. And, well, Martha. And Martha, I guess. But Martha's, at the end. yeah. And Alexander. Yes. Okay, so we get four. We get a few, but, like, I feel like Martha and Alexander are more isolated. Yeah, more standalone songs. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So, Jeremy first comes into play in Quite Like You, or is it Twist Your Ankle? Um, no, I think it's, it's Quite Like You, but I think Jeremy's character is present in Early to the Party as well. I think he's yes. kind of the asshole. The we, so the introduction we get to Jeremy in Quite Like You is Jeremy's so stoned, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't see the tears in Sherry's yeah, eyes, I think is the line. Yeah. Um, so right away we're like, oh, Jeremy sucks. Yeah. Like He's stoned and his presumably girlfriend is sad and yeah. he doesn't care. Which in Quite Like You pans out to our narrator tries to get with Sherry but because sh- of that. Yeah. She still likes Jeremy. And Sherry still is with uh, Jeremy. So then I think early to the party is Sherry mm-hmm. showing up early and being uncomfortable and being like, where the heck is Jeremy? And then Jeremy shows up and is just like a jerk and she's like, well, this sucks. Yeah. Which part of the theory with that is in early to the party, she goes out to have a cigarette and I think worse than you is also her having a cigarette and trying mm. to find Jeremy, potentially. Because yeah. she's looking for a lighter, and she tries to find his jacket. Worst in You is, like, is a hit and is really fun musically. But when you look at the lyrics, it is kind of sad and insecure. Yeah. So I feel like that could be... I initially didn't think that it was Sherry, but I think that fits pretty well. So we have that kind of tale of Jeremy and Sherry trying to... Well, mostly Sherry trying to get Jeremy's attention. And um, Jeremy just being drunk and... Yeah. Not all that over great. the place. Yeah. The other time Jeremy comes up by name is in To You, where whoever the narrator is, is like, hey, can we go outside and talk? Uh, by the way, I really like you. Yeah. And it's left kind of ambiguous if they're confessing love or just like drunken companionship. Like, oh, like we're the bestest of friends. Yeah. But Jeremy takes it. He's like, oh, you're in love with me? You're f- lame. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Classic so, Jeremy. Yeah, classic Jeremy. But again, even in that context, we get, like, the specifics of Jeremy. Yeah. But the the ambiguity of, like, when Amy and I listened to the song, I first thought it was a, a guy confessing he was in love with Jeremy. Yeah. And you thought... I thought it could be a girl. But it could also just be either of them confessing... Either love or friendship. friendship. Yeah. yeah, and then Jeremy taking it the other way, and then, like, just, like, kind of making fun of them with yeah. his friends. So I, I think that's like a very good highlight of how Andy Schaff makes it so that you can relate to the narrator or the main kind yeah. of inner by of each song so by leaving that self ambiguous, but then creating it, like making it very realistic by providing details and conversational yeah. elements and like names of Jeremy, for example, because yeah. no one wants to relate to Jeremy anyway. <laughs> But yeah, but the, there are like really specific details left out. I guess it's kind of interesting. It's like the details are left out about the person thinking it, right? So it's like they don't they don't need to specify those um, details because they already they already know themselves. You know, it's like yeah. they don't have to describe who they are. It's just you know, yeah, just how they like you were saying. It's like their thoughts and their reactions. Yeah, because that's what would like go through your head. Yeah, if you're, in that situation. you're not gonna really react to like, I guess who you are. Yeah. It's more like what is actually happening. Um, so that ties together a lot of the songs on the album, honestly. Yeah. Um, a lot of the the Jeremy ones, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Which So that was uh, Early to the Party, Quite yeah. Like You, Worse Than You, To You. 
So that seems like a longer, a longer, um, like narrative, not arc, but just like yeah. plot, I guess, or like kind of a through line to it yeah. all. And then also, we were thinking the magician twist your ankle and begin again are all kind of related. Yeah, I don't remember the begin again. Begin again is just very. Maybe that, it was that's a else. Jeremy one too. Begin again is Jeremy, because it's the guy saying that. He doesn't care if Jeremy's fooling around with another girl or with Sherry, but the narrator wants the other girl that Jeremy's fooling around with. Yeah, so Begin Again is kind of a sequel to Quite Like You, then. Uh, yeah, because kind of. Um, Sherry puts her arm around Jer- Jeremy's Yeah, back. it's one guy wants Sherry, Sherry wants Jeremy, Jeremy wants Sherry and other girls, and this other guy wants the other girl that Jeremy is with. That's right, yeah. So again, Jeremy sucks. So big love triangle, square, yeah. pentagon. At this, <laughs> uh, it's a very large. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at, at this party, um, which I guess is kind of party-ish, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I I kind of made the connection listening to the album and and, and kind of making notes about it, of uh, the magician and um, twist your ankle. I sort of the magician is. It seems like people kind of witnessing, people at the party witnessing this person drinking a lot and like, I, I took it as almost like life of the party, like fun. Yeah, like he's like showing off. Yeah. And like people like him, but maybe not. And then Twist Your Ankle is more from the magician's point of view of being like, why are these people laughing at me? Yeah, yeah. Like, just like Everybody's... uncomfortable, wants to just go home, like wish it, like they didn't come out. Um, mostly like... The big thing was the doo doo doos in it because there's like also that in Twist Your Ankle that's really similar. Yeah, so you, as the magician, you said the only time doo 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 is sung, it's on mm-hmm. the magician and Twist Your Ankle. Yeah, and it's slightly different. And they both seem like like I don't know. The magician is like everyone's laughing at the magician, and then the Twist Your Ankle is like everyone's laughing at me. Yeah, or it's yeah. like kind of like. And my my like pet theory or whatever is that the magician makes it disappear and I think that that's him drinking all his yeah. alcohol drinking very fast heavily. and thus making a fool of himself a lot yeah. quicker than everyone else and like people at the party like thinking that's funny the like yeah obnoxiousness yeah. of it is funny where the magician just like feels bad about it and you can imagine people almost like cheering him on but yeah then, but then when he's actually like just drunk and stumbling it's like that's just, yeah like oh you're pathetic dude yeah like, and yeah it would just make him feel anxious or her I guess. yeah where the yeah the the magician there's no gender i don't think there's gender specified no and that's the thing with most of these songs there isn't gender i'm trying to think if in the magician there is but maybe mm-hmm. not yeah gender isn't really specified though it's only when there's like names i think yeah and even then yeah it could be i guess not specified yeah i think that was the big i think big conspiracy with <laughs> That I noticed, the the Twist Your Ankle Magician. I don't yeah. know if there's any other connections lyrically. And I mean that ties most of the songs together, except for the last three. Yeah. All seem kind of standalone. Yeah, kind of just other people at the party. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is it could be similar characters. Mm-hmm. Like Eyes of the Mall describes a girl dancing on her own. That could yeah. be Sherry. That could be one of the girls Jeremy's. Yeah. Uh, sleeping with or something. Mm. But. Also, like, worse than you could be, literally, just, like, yeah. a random couple or something. That's true. Yeah, by no means are we saying this is what yeah. all of this means. I mean, worse than you could literally not even be a couple. Yeah, it could be friends. It could be friends with, like, maybe one person that's interested in the other one. Yeah. I kind of like that. I feel like it's, like, whatever yeah. it is to you. <laughs> There's lots. Like, yeah. <laughs> which is fun, which is, like, yeah, really fun lyrically to... Uh, we should talk about Alexander All Alone. Yes. We both had different perspectives on those lyrics, too. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, I thought he fell, was pronounced dead, but was resuscitated. Hmm. And you thought he just died. I thought he straight oh. up died. Yeah. And he, the whole song is kind of from his, like, out of... Like, the first part is, like, not really from his perspective, because it's more mm. just saying what happened. Like, he goes up for a smoke, falls down. And then it's suddenly from his perspective of, like, him having this... Being dead, having an out-of-body experience, like... Mm-hmm after death being like oh what now nothing happened like it's supposed to happen yeah the main refrain being if hell is found inside of me nothing else can set me free yeah so like if hell is found inside of me open me up and spill me out yeah yeah so 
I guess it doesn't matter what happens because the main point of the song is death isn't a relief from I was, yeah shitty. <laughs> I guess yeah or just like maybe death is like I took it too is like our perspective of death isn't correct or like what happens isn't correct I feel like or or it's not what he expected at the very yeah. least yeah and there's so few lyrics in that song yeah. too that it's like really ambiguous what yeah. happened even him just like dr- like it's not even explain what happens to him yeah I'm just like it's not a big dramatic death it's just like he's just dead yeah. all of a sudden <laughs> he like was smoking and then fell yeah and then the neighbor yeah. saw him or something and they called it at like a party like no one notices yeah like yeah kind of ju- I guess just challenging like normal or more dramatic depictions of death I guess yeah it's very no like nonchalant more in a way yeah which is kind of weird but yeah still like it's never really confirmed if he comes back to life or if He's dead. Like, again, another, like, ambiguous. Yeah. You're probably right. He probably did just die. I don't know. I don't know. And then the last song we should talk about. Yes. Um, Martha Sways. Yes. I love that this song closes the album. Maybe, maybe we should save this yeah, for the end, Yeah, let's save actually. this for the end. Let's maybe just talk about more of the musical elements. Mm-hmm. Now that we've done our um, conspiracy theories. Yeah. Our, so, it says we tackled the uh, lyrics. So I was surprised to notice, like, kind of listening back to it more critically, like, f- to make notes, um, I can't believe I didn't notice how piano-based it was. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it didn't stick out to me before, but, like, all the songs are, like, usually piano. Or there's an odd, like, kind of fun one that's actually, like, bass. Bass is largely driving it. Yeah, there's, a lo- like, so many great bass and drum grooves. Mm-hmm. Like, I think especially, I have it noted early to the party, has mm-hmm. a really sweet groove. I think Eyes of the Mall is very similar. Yeah. Like, just very, like, upbeat. And, like, Andy Schaff is just great at syncopation, too. Like, it's mm-hmm. very, like, driving. Or mm-hmm. even the melodies, I found, were, like, they're really catchy, but they're not just, like, straight Yeah. melodies. They're, like, weird Especially Eyes of the Mall. Or, like, it's very... Yeah. Just continuous, like... It's very looping and, like... Yeah off kilter too which goes along with what we were saying about the tone of it being happy but not quite happy it's like catchy and on the beat but not quite on the beat yeah if that makes yeah. sense it's or, also like i don't know drinking at a party yeah you're not gonna be, <laughs> you're not gonna be quite enough. on the beat <laughs> yeah to talk about the piano again too mm-hmm. i i think it's most notable because his previous album was i think mostly guitar and voice it was yeah. a guitar based with piano and clarinet as like texture yeah where this one is like mostly keyboard bass like piano yeah. mostly and then if guitar is there it's like acoustic guitar way in the background yeah. or it's there electric was one, guitar yeah there was one song that has a little instrumental part that i think is electric guitar i don't remember which one it is yeah i think there's but I think there was like one song whenever there's those melodies yeah the like really upfront melodies it's like a guitar layered with a like a keyboard yeah or some sound but you don't really hear the guitar very much no and it's more like, just makes it thicker i guess that's the other thing the the sounds are so thick and yeah. lush on this album like the chords there's like seven strings and yeah. like a clarinet i think because like... of that is like whenever there is a melody it's not just one instrument doing it mm-hmm. like that's i noticed the magician like listening back to the intro it's like mostly i think clarinet and then there's like a string underneath it and then mm-hmm. like i think like a cello part comes in after yeah and it's like yeah just such a layering and, I think... and it still is the piano in the back too so it's like and i think that um is a really good method because as we were saying like everything is off kilter right like everything is a little off from what you'd expect Mm -hmm. so layering it up so much makes it like still work because everything is go is working really hard together to do it i think in the worst in you was another time i noticed this where he does a really weird vocal melody Mm. where he does that weird jump and stuff but he's singing along to a guitar playing the same melody so it makes it like this weird kind of janky sounding melody fits really well because like oh the guitar is doing it too and like everything is kind of supporting it there is, yeah, for all the melodies, and yeah, there's something always supporting it, so it doesn't seem that drying or weird. And that, it is kind of similar, like, it might be, like, a stretch to tie it back to the theme of a party, but just, like, always, at a party, there's always, like, background noise, or, like, there's always other things going on. Like, it's always, like, it's like larger a, sound. It's a group environment, what's going too, on. so if someone's doing something janky, there's probably, like, yeah. three other people <laughs> going along with it, right? Yeah. Like, if everyone's dancing, or everyone's, like 
oh, like someone's locked in the bathroom. Like we yeah. gotta all work to, like. Like it isn't that isolated, you know. There's there's not like. Yeah. A, You're never, except Alexander all alone, which has like a very sparse texture and has mm. that high piano. And that's how I feel with Martha Swayze too. But we'll get into yeah. that at the end. Gotta <laughs> yeah. Gotta save Martha Swayze. But for most of the like um, upbeat like more party ones there is like a lot going on in the song musically like texturally mm. like there's lots of layering of instruments and stuff which i think probably harkens back to the party as an, uh, an overall theme mm. yeah i also just love the clarinet whenever there's a clarinet part it's so good yeah yeah and i love the way he sings yeah like in uh twist your ankle yeah he has these really cool vocal scoop yeah. things that are just like so cute I also noticed for the sort of instrumental parts, like there's lots of little instrumental breaks in the songs. One of them I noticed like early to the party, there's like a big kind of chromatic like build up of strings, right? Um, and it kind of just keeps going, keeps going till it builds up to like the last verse. And it's interesting if you look at the lyrics, it's like an interaction between Sherry and Jeremy takes place during that. And then it's like her reacting to it in the, in the last verse. So it's kind of interesting to see like how the little instrumental breaks could actually be like narrative parts or like the narrative yeah. things are happening during those breaks i think that's that works so well with the way the lyrics are ambiguous mm -hmm. and the way we're talking about the the instruments contribute to this party atmosphere it's like yeah. so much is left unsaid but it's also said in yeah. the, in the instrumental music like yeah yeah so you everyone can like find their own experience in yeah. this album in that way because there's so much room to kind of because there's so much uh, kind of left out but it's also like this, it is specific enough that it creates its own world and its yeah. own like sound and like you feel like you're in this party world. But yeah, it leaves a lot up to, having your own to the listener to sort of figure out or, or choose for the, the characters. Mm. So now begins the segment where we talk about our personal highlights from the album. I know we haven't really talked about Martha Swayze yet, but I want to start with just the string part in that. I feel like it really, it just musically, it's really pretty and like it's such a simple song and it, it adds a lot more to it rather than him just playing guitar and kind of mm. singing the lyrics. Um, and then it also, I think, adds to the character because the strings, like they're pretty, but they kind of get like dark and creepy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like it's them dancing mm -hmm. and kind of him in his inner mind, like freaking out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, like not yeah. feeling good or like realizing he's Very not inner happy. Anxiety. Yeah. So I really liked that aspect of the song. I'm just gonna do two quick little highlights okay. that are kind of referential. I noticed in Quite Like You, he never actually says quite like you. Oh yeah. He just says like I've never met someone like you. Mm. But if you called it someone like you, it would be <laughs> exactly Adele. Yeah. So that's funny. Um, I really feel like that was intentional. And then also in To You, the way the chords are, it has this little, it does like a couple chords and then it does like a little chromatic three note thing when it goes back to the beginning of the chords, mm. which is exactly Imagine by uh, John Lennon, Ah, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I don't know if those are actual references, but which goes back to another highlight I actually wanted to bring out was, I think I showed my dad Worst in You and he was like, this sounds just like the 70s or something. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, where's new kind of? I get that. And I, I feel like it's there's like a lot of uh, and like... there's a lot of like retro vibes. Mm, yeah. To some of it, so I don't I don't know if it's intentional for him or well, even though like I don't know if the road sound is that present on the whole album, but even yeah. like the road sound is pretty retro. Yeah, just like the keyboard sound in general, yeah. and having like melodies like that. Yeah. With guitar and piano. It's almost like an old folk sound. Yeah, yeah, and we, yeah, short and sweet adds to yeah. that too, and like. Especially Worst in You is, like, pretty short. Very short. Yeah, sweet. I think it's, like, the shortest song. That's interesting. I never really thought of that. But he does have kind of a retro feel. Yeah. So I, I, he was probably just listening to that kind of music, or, or maybe it's an intentional... Mm -hmm. like, I feel like that might be slightly just his sound. That too. Yeah. Though it is different from his other... Yeah, music. I guess his, his other album isn't that retro feeling. Yeah, it was more folk, I guess. Yeah. The next sort of highlight that I have is um, kind of the ambiguous lyrics and just the, the really, um, the lyrics being an inner reflective experience. Or, like, I really thought that was interesting to have a folk poppy album, like, having the lyrics that ambiguous and, and sort of of inner reflection. Yeah, rather than a lot of singer-songwriters who are very, like, ego-y or, like, 
yeah. this is my breakup. Yeah, it's not such a direct... Like, you get you get how the character feels through their uh, reflective of an experience rather than them being straight up like, this is how I feel. Yeah, and we're not getting Andy Schaff's yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's not his at all, which, again, is interesting. Yeah. And I, that was one point I really liked. I think I've always found that interesting in his music is they're always very like personal stories but they're not his yeah personal stories yeah i mean that we know of yeah maybe he's jeremy maybe he's uh <laughs> wendell walker <laughs> my next highlight is um in quite like you at the very end so we have this like song where like narrator's trying to get with sherry mm-hmm. and is like ripping up jeremy and then at the end sherry puts her arm around jeremy and there's a super dramatic chord that just fades yes. out and it's yeah. like yeah it's like such a like um is it the dramatic gopher little video do you know that i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> there's a little meme video of a rodent that just like looks straight at the camera and there's like a really loud sound. oh I, yeah. yeah i think i know what you're talking about yes yeah that's like the narrator yeah it's just like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like over the top kind of I th- yeah i thought that was interesting too it's such an abrupt ending yeah yeah and then and then you're kind of left to like imagining how that characters yeah like you don't get how he reacts to that it's just like straight up what happens i feel like a lot of the songs end kind of like that like Mm -hmm. early to the party i think ends like that like like very just kind of like and now we're looking at something else like not like anything resolves yeah like you got a moment a little moment of something and then it just goes on to the next thing yeah where like you again it's kind of like you are left up to decide how it's very like cubist or like collage like or something Mm. like you're not tying things up in a bow yeah Another one I had, I just really like the lyric in The Magician. It kind of ends with uh, just a shaking hand without a concrete plan, and that's repeated. And then it, the last time, it's like, I'm a shaking hand without a plan. And I really like that, and I think it ties into like more of the person. Because the whole time, The Magician, I feel like, is kind of from an outside watching The ma- Magician. Mm-hmm. And then that last line, you kind of get their perspective of it. And I mm-hmm. think like that line ties into Twist Your Ankle perspective mm. of the magician of like i'm a shaking hand without a plan like sort of like yeah it like foreshadows mess, like the, yeah. the twist your ankle yeah that's really cool i think you're really right about the magician and twist your ankle yeah that's sweet uh my last highlight and then maybe we'll move on is i just really like the song to you it like really stuck out to me at first especially in my head it was like a guy friend confessing love to his his guy friend yeah. in that context it's such a vulnerable song yeah. it's very tragic and it's like i still think either way it's if it if yeah way, i yeah, think I it is kind of a very vulnerable song yeah especially doing it with jeremy oh jeez yeah I, yeah i just found it so emotionally kind yeah. of interesting and like heavy hmm. like I, I always find music that is like so quaint Mm-hmm. Or, like, realistic but not romanticized. Yeah. Is, like, the most emotionally compelling. Because and that, yeah. Because it's, like, most realistic, I guess. And that song really... Like, that's is, that song's so realistic. Of just yeah. some kind of jerk drunk at a party. Like, just totally taking what you said out of context. Or, like, just totally making fun of yeah. your feelings. And making you feel like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's very good. So now that we're getting to the end of the podcast, yes. we should talk about the end of yes. the album. Finally, Martha Sways. So, I guess with Martha Sways, it does seem like just two other characters. Um, yeah, it's like narratively kind of separate, mm-hmm. it feels. I think what's important in like a, not important, but what I like in a last song is that it feels like you've come a long way. Hmm. And because I do like listening to albums kind of in order and as yeah. a whole thing. Um, and this song does really well at that, yeah. I feel. Like, the way that it starts with just guitar, which, mm-hmm. like we were saying, there's not that much guitar in the album, yeah. too. So it's almost a more vulnerable state. And it's yeah. kind of, like, slower than you'd expect. It yeah. feels like it's dragging and stuff, so it's... It's totally different than every other song in the album. Mm-hmm. Totally different. Where I think it is... I think it's just his vocals, guitar, and the strings. Yeah, there's bass, I too, Is there bass? I think there's bass but i think this is generally all the songs could be in different orders and stuff it seems like it's going from early in the party to later in the party yeah i feel like yeah. the magician is at the beginning because it's the hit and it's a really good opening 
Yeah, you were saying it might take place but later. But I feel like the original order would be like early to the parties first, then mm-hmm. maybe the magician twist your ankle, and then the rest of the order. Because it kind of goes like early to the party is like such beginning of the party. Yeah, literally and then called it early to the party. It starts kind of amping up, and then you get the more hits fun. Mm-hmm. And then it slows down a bit with like Alexander all alone is kind of. Even to you, the first few songs all have the slower vibe and slower mm-hmm. introduction, and then quite like you is much like more upbeat. Than you too. Begin again, worse than you is very upbeat. Yeah. So it does feel like people are getting drunk. Yeah. And like being more, more uh, energized. Peak of the party, yeah. right? But then Martha sways is it feels like people have left the party. Yeah. There's some people left. So it's way more sparse of a song. Yeah, right? way more sparse. It's not yeah. the same layering as if we're relating the, the background sounds to the instrumentation. Yeah. This instrumentation is less. Yeah. So there's less people potentially. Yeah. And it's just two characters dancing. Mm-hmm. One of them's named Martha. We don't yeah. know anything about the other one necessarily. Just that they're sad. We had different theories about that too. It seems like there's a breakup of some sort. Yeah. With someone else that is Or like, Martha. maybe not even a... Yeah, I guess breakup, because, yeah. Just someone still being in love with someone else, but then maybe trying to be with someone else. A new person. Yeah. like to feel better. It's uh, Martha's thin, pretty just like you. So it's yeah. like the character's comparing Martha to someone else the whole time. Yeah. And they're really sad. Yeah. So, like, you were talking about that string part. Yeah. Uh, it, it literally, at one point... He says, and I want to die. Yeah. And the music, like, yeah. pauses and, like, does this dramatic... Yeah, it li- right after he says that. And then it comes back like in. dancing Dancing in her, in her eyes. eyes, yeah. Yeah. And then just keeps going. Yeah. And then the the end, I think, like, the last line is, like, bringing me back or, like... Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah, because he's... Bringing him back to reality or, like... It isn't that string part that happens and stuff and he's, yeah. like... You know, maybe having a panic attack Inner or something. Inner turmoil. And then... Um, While dancing with Martha. And Martha says, it's all in my head. Yeah. And she brings me back. Yeah. Or whatever. So which... then... The, yeah, it's like after the string part, she brings him back to reality. Mm-hmm. Which makes me think it's like, there's some breakup, mm-hmm. however tragic. Yeah. They're trying to, like, get over that, but they're having a lot of, you know, mental health issues. Yeah. But Martha seems to help that. Or, or, or yeah. maybe just... The experience of being with... Someone. I don't even see Martha as helping, to be honest. She, yeah, I guess she pours him a drink. and like. It's more like... Yeah. I've, even like her just saying it's all in your head and stuff like that. Like, Not that it's Martha's fault or anything, but just like, I don't think it's helping. I don't think they're moving on with Martha, you know? I'm a little more optimistic, I think. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Martha's, Martha's cool beans, you know? She's hanging She's out. She's probably cool, but I think this person is still... Well... The character, it isn't working. Not yet. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, at least they're not alone. But I, I also thought it was really accurate. Like, I feel like drinking, your drinking mind is like when you're going to think about those things. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like or you, like when you're going to feel really bad about it. Like, maybe Martha and this person have been seeing each other and stuff. Yeah. But this, like, whatever breakup happened a while ago. But now that they're drunk, they're like sad and reflective about yeah. it. Yeah. Like... That's, it seems like very accurate drunk thinking, which I, I liked. Yeah, kind of a nice way to end. I guess it's kind of the end of a party, too. It's like, I don't know. I feel like it's normally a little sparse, a little dreary. Yeah, and it kind of peters out yeah. all of a sudden, but also slowly. And yeah. And, like, doesn't really end. And I I always love just, like, something, like, in this album where it says, bringing me back at the end. Yeah. It's just like, oh, well, like, let's listen to the album again. That, yeah, I liked the bringing me back, tying it into, like, the character is brought back to reality from their inner turmoil and then like we are brought back to reality after the album ends like we're kind of like mm-hmm. back to our lives after experiencing this whole party of fictional characters so we're finally so let go that, yeah. out of the world of yeah party. like mm-hmm. we're brought back after the album ends kind of thing i think that's a good place for us to come back yeah. <laughs> out of the world of the party <laughs> yes so uh it's been good potting with you. It's been good potting with you. Good good potting with Andy Shaw the party. Yeah. Um, we'll do another album next time. Yes. To be determined. This is number one, so we don't know how often or... Or how... Yeah. What album's going to be next? We don't know. Uh, if you're listening to this, hope you liked it. Yeah. If not, then I don't care That's what you okay. Think. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.